China's big political jamboree is over. The 3,000 deputies of the National People's Congress approved the selection of a new president and his prime minister. Now they start the first of two five-year terms. There were no surprises. President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Li Keqiang and other top officials were all put forward by the Communist Party months ago. The Congress just approved the party's selections. The issue is what the party wants these new leaders to do and whether they will surprise anyone during their term in office. Link Asia asked three people to comment on some of the challenges facing China's new leaders. We first called Zhang Li Fan, an outspoken writer and historian. Zhang has a wide following on the internet. We asked him about one of China's biggest problems, corruption. The National People's Congress heard several speeches declaring corruption to be a mortal threat to the political system. Is Xi Jinping up to tackling the problem? Of course, we have noticed that Mr. Xi, since taking office, behaves very differently than his predecessor. For example, he travels light with a small entourage. He only wants four dishes and one soup at official banquets. His highly publicized anti-corruption campaign, we've noticed them all. But so far, we haven't really seen any big tiger being caught. After the two sessions are over and the new leadership takes full control of power, Will there be any moves later? It's all hard to say at the moment. But fighting corruption will be very difficult because there hasn't been any political reform in the past 10 years, which has accelerated and aggravated corruption. Back in the 1980s, at the start of the economic reform, resistance to the fight against corruption and reform of the political system mostly came from the top level. Now things are totally different from the bottom to the mid-level, from the provincial to the ministerial level, an intricate web of vested interests has been formed. The interest groups have grown stronger and more powerful. So if the top level is determined to crack down on corruption, they may end up offending the majority of people within the party. I often use this metaphor. It's like a big ship is sailing in the sea and running into a storm. They have to jettison cargo. If each cargo owner takes a tough stand, then it's more likely that all the cargo owners will gang up on the captain and throw him into the sea. So I think fighting corruption now is very risky. Economic reform is another big issue. China is trying to change its economy away from dependence on exports toward a consumer society. It also faces growing income inequality and a gap between the cities and the countryside. Bob Cap was formerly head of the U.S.-China Business Council and is a Link Asia advisor. What economic reforms were talked about at the National People's Congress? Uh, other than the so-called government reorganization plan, which involves some significant amalgamations of disparate uh, bodies, but doesn't really change the structures uh, in any radical way. Not much has come out to show that some, some uh, real reformist movement is underway, especially when you think of the kind of larger questions that have been, uh, that have been in the air, sort of the fog of concerns that have been uh, in the air as China approached its great party congress of last fall and this National People's Congress in the spring. Now, that said, as we used to say in Washington, D.C., the rhetoric is the rhetoric of the market. There is, uh, there is a lot of sort of sloganeering going on, even in the People's Congress, about making the Chinese economy uh, more responsive to market forces. It hasn't taken institutional form yet. You don't see it in, in major policy initiatives. Uh, but the, the rhetoric is the rhetoric is pro market. It's not pro state dominance. The, the reality is still very significantly the role of the, of the state and its state owned enterprises uh, in, in, uh, in, in a sense, determining the, the macro behavior of the economy. But the rhetoric, perhaps for public consumption, is the rhetoric of a greater flexibility with regard to the market forces, a greater uh, greater opportunities and a better environment for non-government companies to uh, to germinate and to grow. That's all in the rhetorical universe right now. We just haven't seen much of it put into practice. 
China's environmental problems are immense. The air over big cities is often poisonous. Rivers and streams are mostly polluted. Farmland is disappearing. Alvin Lin is with the China branch of the Natural Resources Defense Council. Did he see something in the just concluded meetings to give environmentalists optimism? There's been a lot of um, discussion, you know, whether it's um, uh, Xi Jinping um, or uh, Li Keqiang. You know, a lot of attention to the environment, uh, environmental state uh, in the last uh, few months. Um, but honestly, right now, it's, it's a little hard to say. You know, you know we, we all expect that something or hope that something um, will come out of this, you know, um, something very positive. But we have yet to see, you know, there is still in China um, this issue where Polluters aren't really punished very heavily at all. Um, you know, there have been recent spills in the factories that are responsible for these very large chemical spills, for example, um, have been, you know, very minimally punished. You know, a few people within the factory fired, but really nothing else. And so that's sort of um, this, uh, so the old-fashioned way of, of doing things in China, which is that local... Um, local cities, uh, towns will protect the factories um, that are you know, increasing GDP within their borders. Um, so there's still sort of a, a lack of really strong enforcement against um, polluters um, at, the, at the levels where it's happening. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.